Well, hi Matthew, it's great to see you on Zoom. Hello Eve. Um, so we used to work together a little bit, so tell us a little bit about where you are and your, your context as we have this discussion. Yes, well Eve, we miss you in York, but we know you're doing great things now in Leeds via, via Hull. But yes, so I'm in York and um, I'm at a church called St Michael of Alfrey, sometimes known as the Belfry. Uh, I'm the vicar there and I, uh, with my wife and Sam and, and the family, we've been here about 11, 11 and a half years, something like that. So quite a while now. Yeah, amazing. And we've just been thinking um, about church online, about this season that we're in yeah. um, that isn't, isn't ideal. It's not complete, but it's also has opportunities for us to, to be church in a new way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you uh, have a blog or a couple of blogs that you um, write on. And yeah. one of your latest ones, I found really helpful. Um, and uh, it's called Don't Just Watch Worship. So how did that kind of thinking come about? Yeah, well, it's, it's a bit of a phrase been on my mind for a while. And it was also something that we I teased around with some of our second year interns a week or two ago. And, um, uh, um, and, and that really was what emerged for me again out of that conversation when I'm feeling more strongly that message really needs to be heard. So as a result, I put it out as a blog um, for the wider discipleship world, just to encourage people. Um, because it is a fascinating season we're in. I know for some people it's really difficult. You know, they've lost loved ones and some people are working so hard. There's all sorts of challenges. Mm. There's also lots of opportunities, I think, in this season. And one of them, I think, is to do with what's happening with worship in our homes and that's very exciting but what I've noticed both in myself and talking to other people is it's very easy to be passive in that to just mm. uh, watch the screen like we might watch television and not really engage so this phrase has really been milling around my, my mind don't just watch worship I, I think it's a good one and I hope perhaps other people pick it up as well yeah, because it strikes me that we're often talking now about like limiting screen time, like for children and even ourselves. And suddenly that is the way that often we're engaging with our wider church. Um, so yeah. you, you mentioned a few headings in the blog. Um, can you yeah. summarize them? And I'm going to pick your brains about a couple. Yeah, well, again, it kind of emerged out of this conversation with the interns. But in, four, four things really stood out for me. The first one is choose your church. The second one is arrange your space. The third one is prepare your heart. And the fourth one is um, give your worship. And those are four things that um, I'm really trying to encourage our, our folks to be doing. Um, but the thing is, I think those four things, I think we should be doing anyway. Um, yeah. Actually, wherever we worship, and particularly when we worship in our church buildings as well. But what the challenge is, is to do those things well. We take them for granted in the church building. But can we do those things at home? Hopefully we can. Um, but those, those are the four yeah. key headings, really. Yeah, because I was thinking that, particularly as church leaders and those leading services, I often challenge myself to worship before I worship. So before you go and lead a service yeah. or preach or involved, that preparing your heart is, is really key, particularly if you're in, in a position leading part of the service, because you're often giving out at that point and actually to make sure that you're still worshipping. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I really agree. Key. And perhaps that's the biggest challenge, I think, for most of us. Um, it's so easy, isn't it, if the service is at half past ten, let's just say, to turn up at 29 minutes past, having just, I don't know, stuffed your breakfast down you or made the bed or, you know, whatever you've been doing. And, and actually, we're rushing into worship and not really preparing our hearts, not being ready. Um, now, obviously, that... We can, that's still okay, still good to be there. But actually, I found for me personally, my engagement with the Lord and, and with the whole experience of online worship is so much better when I spent some time. It doesn't need to be necessarily very long, it could just be a minute. But just preparing, getting myself ready, getting my heart ready. Do you pray, asking the Lord to come, and not just to, to meet with me, but to meet with others, to meet with others who are going to be uh, um, joining in the service, and particularly those many folk we know who aren't yet followers of Jesus who are watching the services, you know, it would be great if, if the church and our nation were praying for them because we know God loves to respond to our prayers. So I want to be urging us to be praying, praying for those folk who are seeking God that they would find him, particularly in our online services. Yeah, and particularly as we go into maybe a longer time of being online, 
yeah. that's going to increase, isn't it? I think I was struck. I think choosing your church, I feel like um, probably people watching this in the St. George's service as it is, will be um, St. George's members or people maybe in Leeds looking to, or friends and family members. So the, um, the arranging yeah. your space point, I want to ask how you arrange your space at home. Obviously not everyone has the same resources. Maybe people have one device. They don't have multiple things to choose, but how do you arrange your space at home? Your space at home. Yeah. Well, I think um, we're trying to worship uh, as a family on, on Sunday when we do our services. So we've got very much in mind the others in the family. So there's myself at the moment, there's myself, my wife and, and, um, our two youngest are worshiping with us. There's four of us. Um, so at the moment, we'd actually, um, we actually we've done a couple of things. We, we really watch it on the TV. Sometimes we stream that from a phone. Uh, sometimes we go directly through through Apple TV um, through, through the internet. But we watch it on a big screen. So that's what we're doing. Watch it on the on the TV screen, um, and um, that's good. That's helpful. Um, but also just trying to create some space around us. So you know, in front of me, I'd like to have have a Bible out. Sometimes a notebook. Um, and also space where I can stand up and, and a bit of space to uh, to move or to um, yeah to, to to use my body in worship. Um, mm-hmm. I mean that's the other the other challenge for me. I don't know what it's like for you, Eve, but I found that it's so easy just to sit on the sofa and, as I said earlier, be passive. And I've, that doesn't actually help me. It's it's mm-hmm. okay. It's better than doing nothing. But actually, for me, uh, I find out like I do in church, I normally don't sit down. I try to, if I can, I, I normally would stand and pop occasionally kneel or something like that. But there's something about standing, I think, that's intentional um, and say to God, I'm here, I'm ready to worship. And I'm, I'm finding, I'm trying to work harder at using my body, raising my hands or clapping or, and, and this Sunday, for instance, I, I, I intentionally try to do that m- more and I actually th- think I, I engage with the whole experience a lot more. So I, I'm learning. But we're all learning, aren't we? What do you do? What do you do, Eve? What do you do? Do you do you use your body in the online worship? What do you do? <laughs> uh, so me and my colleague Bex, who's staying, um, yeah, we have it on the telly, and we both sit yeah. on different um, seats. And uh, uh, Bex, my colleague, um, has a Bible with uh, coloring stuff in as well because that really helps her to concentrate and That's focus. Good. So she's obviously doing that. And um, yeah, standing, doing the actions, doing the actions, particularly not just thinking this is a kid's song, but kind of going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and finding even, because you have to kind of adjust the volume of it so that to make the music loud enough so that you singing along, you really go for it. And then you have to turn it down a bit sometimes for the, for the speaking. Um, and then, yeah, having a Bible and um, a notebook. And I think... Um, trying to put my phone down it's really tempting to like message someone if something was really good or um yeah or do that kind of thing but just like in church there's I think there's time for kind of engaging and using that technology but also yeah. trying to to commit to and also honor the people who are, are leading or leading worship or speaking um mm-hmm. as I would if I was physically with them I think it's like honoring that time for worship yeah that's good. um I think really helps yeah. When, when, when I yeah. talked to some of our interns about it, it was very interesting because one of them was saying how there were some benefits in being able to um, have, have, have the service on in the corner while they were chopping carrots. And, and, but on reflection, they said, actually, whilst there were benefits of that, next time they didn't do that. They chose to go into the sitting room. And uh, I mean, so it's, it's probably better than, than nothing, but actually the multitasking thing, if they're really honest, didn't really work very well for them. So they chose to be more yeah. intentional and found that they, they found the experience so much more rewarding by, by not chopping their carrots. So I'm not telling anybody off if you're doing that or if you're in the bath watching. Yeah, great. It's good to be there. But actually, there's something about, um, yeah, I, I guess just the, the intent, isn't it? And, and getting ourselves ready. Uh, it's so helpful if we, if we can do that. So um, if we can prepare ourselves, we, we often don't think about that so much, do we? But preparing ourselves is very important. Yeah, and you mentioned it doesn't take long to just prepare your heart for worship. Yeah. And what is that kind of practically? I find kind of making sure I'm kind of sat ready or whatever a little bit before, so I'm not rushing to get my coffee. What's yeah. that like for you? Um, 
Yeah, it, it is that. I mean, it might be a prepare coffee earlier. It could be simply I, I just sit there and I just offer myself afresh to the Lord. For me, it's mainly about prayer, actually. Just just mm. starting to starting to engage with the Lord bef- before the service starts. And as I say, praying for others who are going to watch. Uh, uh, so it's mainly that. But, it, but as, as I said, it's about preparing the space. Um, yeah, making sure that distractions are pushed to one side as much as possible, I think. But that being too precious yeah, about yeah. it, you know, the, we're, we're in our homes and that has its benefits as well. And um, you can always push the pause mm-hmm. button and then catch up later. There, there are those benefits, you know, you can do that. Um, but uh, um, yeah, preparing as, be- as well we can, as best we can. Yeah, I've seen all sorts of different church musicians kind of doing that on online, different kind of how to videos from kind of more traditional or Anglo Catholic backgrounds having spaces in their houses where they and their family yeah. worship to yeah. um, kind of less formal settings. But I think, I think it's also worth mentioning, you know, those with children and younger children in the house. I know families that have had kind of the Lego out or something there to do. Um, sometimes the children go That's off and, and into a, a different place to do their activities, but sometimes all together. And I think being kind to ourselves is good, but to, yeah, to anything that brings us into being attentive to what God is saying and doing, I think is, is great. Exactly. And I think it's worth trying different things, isn't it? And you might try one thing and it didn't work very well. So, okay, we'll try it like this. Or, and as you say, particularly if you've got others with you, little ones or perhaps older family members. Um, I, I appreciate sometimes it's difficult if we're living in a home with, with someone who's, who's not a follower of Jesus and we want to respect them, but also want to worship. So we've got to navigate through that. That's not always easy. But the Lord understands. Mm-hmm. I just want to encourage people to 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 practice to try things um, and and I think really to give God praise. I think that's something that's you probably know is always important to me. That I think I think worship and adoration and praise it it, it is about giving, um, and so so easily do we we forget that, um, and. Mm. It's, it's not always easy in the home, but if we can just say, to God, God, I'm here to give you my love. I'm here to give you my praise. And we, we, take, the, we take the initiative in that. It, it's that scripture from James always speaks so much to me. Draw near to God. Choose to come close to God, and he will draw near to you. That's, that's, that's been my experience throughout my life, really. You know, Christ has all, already reached out to us in his life, death, resurrection, pouring out the Spirit. Now calls us to give ourselves to him. And as we do that, so he comes to us afresh by his Spirit. But we've, we've got to engage with that rather than just mm. just wait. So may I encourage yeah, anyone absolutely. to give yourself in praise? Yeah, and I think it almost, it also serves me as well to to make my heart more prepared for the the preaching because you're, I think you're yeah. more willing to receive what God might have to say because you've given praise to him. Um, yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. It's so good to catch up and talk and uh, hear your wisdom. And um, yeah, I hope lots of people are encouraged to, to maybe follow through or read that blog and, and just see what it's like for them in their home to, yeah. um, to prepare that space and, and give ourselves to the worship of God. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Steve. It's been great to chat. God bless you and the guys in Leeds.